Hey friends, I am glad to be here with you with one of our superstars of Tulsa County, Karen Keith today, and our friends from Ride On Fundraising. I think they're doing a great service to our nonprofit community, bringing us together to talk about ways we're stronger together, which is what we try to do at United Way too. So they've sent a few questions about what we're seeing in terms of volunteerism over the last few months. They've asked, what are we seeing from volunteers and organizations that rely on volunteers throughout the pandemic? And what are some examples of ways that the volunteer structures have been evolving or uh, shifting to make them stronger? And I do think we have some great examples. Um, you know, some of our nonprofits, like our own, don't have a full capacity of people in the building. So we've had to think, how do we be more flexible? How do we be more thoughtful about the projects that we do? Because I'll use Day of Caring as a perfect example. We normally had one big Day of Caring with more than 5,000 people out in the city on, uh, in, in, throughout the county on any one day. Well, you can't really do that in a socially distanced environment. So our great marketing and volunteer team came up with Days of Caring. And I think that this is a key way to think in terms of shift to say what is the real need here and how can our volunteers help us meet this need in being safe and flexible in how we do it. So they came up with days of caring and the first one was a great example where we knew that food was a real challenge. We know that one in three kids during the pandemic are food insecure. We knew that was a challenge. So we said our first day of three days of caring is going to be a food drive. 15 locations, drive by, safe, masks, everybody's got their face covered, and uh, you can just roll down, open your trunk, roll down your window. We raised around 50,000 pounds of food in one day in that model, and we would have never done that if we, if we just followed through our normal procedures. So that's a great example of, of the silver lining of change, because that may be something we do in the future, uh, because there was a real need, and it was a great opportunity. I know our friends at CAP Tulsa have uh, offered, sent home materials so that their volunteers could make books for their students. So maybe you're not sitting next to a student, you know, reading a book. Instead, you're creating something that they can have in their own home. And while I'm talking about reading, I'll give a great example of my own friend, Kate Thomas, who is a longtime reading partner volunteer, one of our, our partners at Eugene Fields. And Kate was telling me when I saw her on her patio, socially distanced this weekend, she said, I'm so excited to be back with reading partners and now doing it virtually so that I'm still connecting with a kid that needs some help, but they've got great curriculum, so there's no reason we can't do it online. So it's not the same, but that flexibility is making a huge difference. And, and Obviously, then, one, one other one I would mention is the great use of technology. And so I would, I would highlight our friends at Goodwill Industries who are helping clients get jobs through the, uh, the virtual applications and platforms. I know Family and Children's Services is doing an amazing work, doing te really telemedicine and telecounseling. And the Mental Health Association just ran a fabulous Zero Symposium normally an in-person conference. They did it virtually. If you registered like we did, you have access to this great archive of material. That's a bonus for us. Instead of coming back to the office and saying, wow, they had so many great speakers and these volunteers put on an amazing conference, we come back and say, hey, watch this session that I just watched at the Zero Symposium. So using the applications and technology to be creative has been wonderful. So a question, what qualities or guidelines are we seeing that work well for volunteer programs in the last six months? I would say flexibility, honesty, safety, collaboration, fearless collaboration to say, here's the need we have. You all are longtime volunteers in our organization. How could we do this in a safe and socially distanced or virtual, or virtual way, you know, and we are getting great solutions. I'll give another example from our second day of caring, 
that our young professionals came up with because they said, look, we're sitting at home, we're on Zooms, what would we do without our raised desk? What would we do without our lap desk? What would we do without our mouse? What would we do without our headset? And so our young professionals in brainstorming with them in our Emerging Leaders program, they said, let's do a gadget drive. So all over the city, we've had this great gadget drive going. So that's a great example of working with your longtime volunteers and partners. They have answers that maybe when we're stuck in doing things one way that we don't normally get to. And then finally, I'll just say, do you have some examples of stories of, of people doing great things during COVID? I mentioned the days of caring. I've mentioned the virtual work, but what I would say at the end that, that encapsulates it all is just this, just like we have in our, our campaign theme this year and just why so many people are giving to the United Way in, in 2020, even though it's a really tough year, and that's that we've come together and exercised our compassion muscles because we all know somebody that's been impacted by this. And Karen, Keith, you know, and one of our amazing county commissioners and the other commissioners, and we've come together and talked about how do we collaborate in this community in a spirit of compassion to solve these problems together. And so you had, you know, we've had a housing summit where we talked about how to stop the tsunami coming of evictions. And the county using the, the Federal CARES Act stimulus money has really stepped up big time to help with that. So. To me, if we're all coming at this from a spirit of collaboration, innovation, let's be creative, and compassion, knowing that community in need is our neighbor who's lost their job or someone who sits next to us whose family business might be struggling that can't operate in the same way, small business employees that are struggling. If we all just have compassion and work together as volunteers, as nonprofit leaders, this can, this pandemic, this COVID-19, it can have silver linings, teaching us that flexibility and safety and innovation can win the day. So thank you for all you're doing. Thank you for Living United and thank you for all the ways you volunteer in this community.